Association and I would like to welcome all of you to the 77th Independence Day celebration. Let me take a moment to thank our Honorable Director Dr. Rakesh Agarwal, our Medical Superintendent Dr. Ellen Dorai Rajan, our Dean Academic Dr. Vikram Kate, our Dean Research Dr. D.M. Tapa, our Project Coordinator Dr. Prem Rajan, our Student Advisor Dr. Lata Chaturvedala, other esteemed dignitaries, senior faculty members, Staff and students have gathered here or are watching the broadcast online. On this day, 76 years ago, we had gained independence from the Britishers after a 200 year long struggle by our, by our freedom fighters. So, every year on this day, we celebrate Independence Day 
in the honor of those brave souls who had sacrificed their lives so that we, the present generation, can enjoy freedom and equality on a daily basis. We often tend to believe that to bring about change, we need to be some kind of political leader or an influential celebrity. But the reality is, not all of us are going to become those things. But does that mean that we're all incapable of bringing about change? Well, I don't think so. I strongly believe that even if at a national level we can't bring about any direct change, that at our community level or at our institute level, if we can bring about a change, all these small differences compound onto a big difference. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. So today, on the occasion of the 77th Independence Day, let us all vow and pledge that we put forward the best, not just for ourselves, but for our community and our nation. Now, I'd like to request our Honorable Director, Dr. Rakesh Agarwal, to kindly address the gathering. Good morning, Vanakkam Namaskar. Esteemed members of the JIPMER faculty, officers, staff members working in various areas of the institutes, students, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin with conveying my greetings to each of you on the occasion of the Independence Day 2023. The day, Independence Day, is a special day in our lives. Thinking of the day makes us feel happy. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of reflection. It's a day of making resolutions at individual level, at the level of small groups, at the level of institution, at the level of the country. The Independence Day this year is somewhat special since it marks the end of a year-long celebration of the 75 years of our independence that we began last year. But looked at in a slightly different context, the past year that this Independence Day is the culmination of has been special in another way. The last one year from the Independence Day in 2022 till today has marked the first full post-COVID-19 year, a period, a year that came after a very challenging period lasting nearly two and a half years. Thus, we have had a relatively normal year, and this is also reflected in our accomplishments in the last few months, in the last year, and in the last few months since we last gathered here for the Republic Day. As I said, it's a day for reflection, so let's look at what we have done in the last one year or the last few months. Looking at it at the macro level, it's a matter of pride that in the recent release of this year's National Institutional Ranking Framework or NIRF results, our institute has continued its upward march, moving up to the fifth rank among medical institutions from the sixth rank in 2022 and eighth rank in 2021. Further, and possibly even more importantly, in the overall NIRF ranking among all universities in the country, we moved up from 54th rank in 2022 to 39th in 2023, a whopping rise of 19, 15 ranks. Similarly, 
In the recent India Today rankings, we ranked as second among the institutions offering MBBS courses. It may be said that these rankings don't mean anything, but they possibly mean something. While these achievements make us feel proud, we must be cognizant that we need to work towards an even higher rank in the coming years and also possibly even if we just want to maintain this. We will need the will and a lot of concerted hard work to move upwards even further. I can assure you that we are capable and we can do it. All it needs is will and concerted hard work. Continuing on the academic front, we are going to make further progress in the next few months. We have received approval of the Standing Academic Committee to start six new super speciality courses, namely MCH in Gynecological Oncology, PDF in Interventional Cardiology, PDF in Head and Neck Radiation Oncology, PDF in Pelvic Radiation Oncology, PDF in Fetal Medicine, and PDF in Pediatric Nephrology. And this is in addition to two new six-year MCH courses in neurosurgery and in pediatric surgery that we began earlier this year. In addition, the Standing Academic Committee has also approved a long-standing request that we were not able to fulfill because of lack of senior resident posts. So we now have an increase in the number of seats for nearly all the DM, MCH and PDF super speciality courses that the institute runs. An elective posting for MBBS interns in rural centers as a part of the community medicine posting outside JIPMER will also be implemented from the next batch. As for admissions, we had fallen back because of the pandemic, but this year our MBBS admissions have been virtually on schedule and the new students have already joined. Admissions for MD, MS, MDS and MCH courses uh, and DMMCH courses have been on time. Entrance exams for MSc and MPH courses have been held and students should be joining later this month. Admissions to nursing and allied health science courses using the NEET scores to obviate the stress of another examination to the prospective candidates should also be completed by next month. The students have had their usual inter-class competitions in time followed by the annual sports day on August 5 and later this month it will be the festive time again, the Spandan. And two convocations, one for medical degrees and the other for nursing and allied health science course degrees are planned in the last week of October 2023. The uh, <coughs> team led by Dean Research has been working to give a boost to the research activity. We held our eighth research day in March and the JIPMER Undergraduate Research Conference, Connaissance, in June. Animal House Building is nearly ready. The CPC SEA Clearance and Animal Ethics Committee approval came in place earlier this month, and approval of equipment for it was done uh, earlier this, uh, in the last week. A bioinformatics facility is likely to be functional soon. The research procedures are being smoothened and SFACTS workshop being an example in that direction. The number of proposals submitted for extramural funding has increased, which is a positive development. And I think we need to thank our faculty members for this positive change. Several new projects are being completed, are in advanced stage of progress, or on the annual. Last week, we saw the inauguration of a new advanced linear accelerator by the Honorable President of India. The biplane digital subtraction angiography equipment that we recently installed is being used on a daily basis and that's something that adds to our capability to treat uh, different kinds of patients. The construction of a new RCC block is in full swing. Hopefully within this financial year we'll complete that work. 
The work on theatre sterile supply department in the WCH is ongoing, a bit, a bit slow. Hopefully, we'll catch up soon. Work on a new 150-bed critical care hospital block has begun. A new 400-bed boys' hostel for students has been approved, and construction should begin in the next two months. A tender for installation of a chute system for transporting specimens and other material around the institute is being readied and should be out in the couple of months. Work on installation of new CCTV cameras around the campus buildings meant to improve our security is in progress. In the recent meeting of the Standing Finance Committee, several new equipment projects were approved. These include a high energy linear accelerator for uh, uh, RCC at the cost of rupees 35 crores, a radiotherapy simulator system costing around rupees 10 crores, and a new advanced cardiac catheterization lab costing around rupees 10 crores again. We now have multiple campuses in Karaikal. Our hostels are ready and they have been occupied. Uh, that's been a big change for our students who were earlier living in rented buildings. The academic building is nearly ready for inauguration and we should be seeing that in the next couple of months. Importantly, one thing that was missing in the planning of Karaikal campus has now been taken care of. The construction of a 500-bed hospital at Karaikal has received approval of the Delegated Investment Board earlier this month, and an MOU for the con its construction should be signed with CPWD in the next 8 to 10 days. At Yanam, the 100-bed multi-speciality consulting unit construction is nearly complete, and it should be starting soon. We have also uh, earlier this month been able to get approval for 90 posts of various cadres for this hospital and recruitment of that is likely to begin very soon. Right here in our main hospital, several new facilities have been activated. These include an additional emergency operation theater for neurosurgery, additional operation theaters for the departments of surgery and obstetrics and gynecology, a 24-7 kangaroo mother care ward in neonatology, a high dependency unit in pediatrics, a new five-bed CCU, and a post-operative ward for orthopedics. Opening of additional operation theaters is on the anvil and should happen within the next four to six weeks once we have additional senior residents joining in. In the rural and urban health centers, facilities for antenatal ultrasound have been started. The Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology has very quietly worked with the Tamil Nadu health system to develop a referral system with the dual objectives of improving the obstetrics care delivery while optimizing the use of its resources, making sure that only those who need specialized care reach JIPMER and others can be looked after closer to their homes. And I hope that other departments will learn from this experience and try to do something similar. And as I will discuss later, that's the way for the institution to move forwards. On the administrative side, we have completed the process for appointment of several positions, including nearly 430 nursing officers, technical staff for radiology, radiotherapy, and pulmonary medicine, etc. For promotional posts, promotions have been completed. The process of recruiting 20 junior administrative assistants is nearing completion, and we should have them joining next month. Recruitments to the newly created 70 posts of senior residents have been done. The process for appointments to 82 newly created faculty posts has been set in motion. These posts, friends, represent an increase of nearly 25% in the faculty strength, and the incoming new blood should provide a major boost to the institute's progress. Let's hope we are able to do that quickly. The institute is continuing follow-up on creation of further posts, and we are keeping our fingers crossed in anticipation, hoping and praying that this will work out. Work on, work on improving the hospital information system is ongoing, and an e-office system is being set up in an effort to improve our efficiency. All the recent achievements have been possible only through cooperation and hard work of many people, 
and I thank one and all for this. This includes our partners for engineering services, namely, namely CPWD and Heights, and for outsourced services, namely security, fire, housekeeping, and other manpower. Let me change gears here. This is my last occasion to address you from this platform, and I wish to leave a few messages. We, the Institute, JIPMER, are on a path of progress. However, I sincerely believe that we and each member of the Institute is capable of a lot more than where we currently are. I think we need to understand, or should I say realize, that the medical education and healthcare in the country are changing changing very rapidly, transforming may be the word. Several new aims have come up and some of them are doing very well. As is apparent from the NIRF rankings, where we have done well, that some of these new institutions are already knocking on our door, ready to take our place. Friends, we cannot sit tight on our existing laurels and hope that our leadership role will continue. Instead, we need to continuously reinvent ourselves if we are to retain our current high rank order and try to even better that. There is no reason why we can't be number one. We can, provided we decide to. For doing this, we need to traverse to a higher plane a higher trajectory. We all are familiar with Chandrayaan moving into higher trajectory and then going towards its focus. Whatever happens, we don't know what will happen in the next few days. Most likely it will go as per plan. If we want to do something, we need to traverse to a higher plane, a higher trajectory in all spheres of our activity. In particular, teaching, patient care and research and also the supportive activity of administration rather than continuing to do more of the same. Friends, we need to improve our efficiency through better utilization of our existing equipment, manpower and other resources and improved workflows, for instance, to get more OTs functional, to reduce hospital stay, to have greater use of our equipment to share equipment across departments so that the same equipment can give more output and can be managed better. If we do this, we can increase the output of our services. I'm not bothered about output of the hospital itself, but if the output of the hospital increases, so does our postgraduate training. There are more opportunities for our postgraduates to work, to learn, if we improve, increase, run our OTs for a longer period, if we do more procedures there, our postgraduates and our uh, faculty also gain. Second, we need to improve the quality, or should I say, the focus of our services by developing and offering more complex and novel treatments and investigations rather than more of run-of-the-mill services. I refer to the effort by the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology a few minutes ago and we need to do more of that to empower other institutions in the region to do the routine work and take upon ourselves more advanced activities. This also applies to teaching and research. We need to ensure that our products, our passing out students and research scholars match or should I say outshine those from any other institution in quality and status. We need to find better and more effective methods of teaching. We need to move towards small group teaching, one-to-one -one teaching. With increase in faculty, that should be possible. Even today, what it needs more is the will and willingness to work beyond the usual rather than uh, it's not possible. We have the skills, we can do it if we decide to. In research, we need to plan and execute more focused, high quality and interdisciplinary research projects. Once we do a few of that kind, 
it would catch momentum and that would by itself serve as a nidus. Finally, an institution is nothing but an amalgamation of individuals. At the level of individuals, we need to pay attention to punctuality, attendance, discipline, and work output per person per day. These need to improve. Each person, each member of the Jipma family needs to reflect, needs to understand that his or her work is important for the Institute's larger goals and has to take pride in his contribution to the Institute's progress. We need to overcome our sense of parochialism and entitlement. We work in Jipmer, so we should get this, and instead need to focus on quality and progress. Each staff member and student needs to focus on what he or she can do for the Institute and not on what one can squeeze out of the Institute. Without this, friends, we run the risk of being left behind as an institution. The world will move on. In the end, friends, to keep the Jipmer flag flying high, it's important that each of us, whatever one is engaged in, contributes with the highest level of commitment. So let's all promise to rededicate ourselves today to putting forward our best for the Institute by being punctual, disciplined, honest, sincere, and faithful to our Institute, by working more efficiently, and by caring for each other towards the progress of the Institute. Let's work together to take, take Jipmer to new heights. Jai Hind. Thank you. Nandri.
Now we'll be having a solo song by Shreyas.
song sung by Dr. Hasda from the OG department.
Now we'll be having a song by Dr. Siddharth from the OG department. जो शहीद हुए हैं उनकी 
जरा याद करो कुर्बानी थैंक यू थैंक यू सर फॉर दैट सोलफुल परफॉर्मेंस विद दिस वे हैव कम टू द एंड ऑफ आर इंडिपेंडेंस डे प्रोग्राम वंस अगेन आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड अ वेरी हार्टी थैंक्स टू आर ऑनरेबल डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर राकेश अग्रवाल आर मेडिकल सुपरिंटेंडेंट डॉक्टर एल एन दराय राजन आर डीन एकेडमिक डॉक्टर विक्रम कार्टे आर डीन ऑफ रिसर्च डॉक्टर डी एम तापा आर डेप्यूटी डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर कृष्ण गोपाल गोयल आर स्टूडेंट एडवाइजर डॉक्टर लता चतुर्वेदला हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट्स एडिशनल मेडिकल सुपरिंटेंडेंट्स ऑफिसर्स इन चार्ज ऑफ द नर्सिंग सेक्शन सिक्योरिटी नर्सिंग डिपार्टमेंट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ कॉलेज ऑफ नर्सिंग पब्लिक रिलेशन ऑफिसर फिजिकल इंस्ट्रक्टर प्रेसिडेंट्स एंड सेक्रेटरीज ऑफ जे एच सी यू द एग्जीक्यूटिव द एग्जीक्यूटिव इंजीनियर इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड सिविल ऑफ सी पी डब्ल्यू डी एस्टेट सैनिटरी हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट फिजिकल एडुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट प्रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ जे एफ ए जे आर डी ए एंड जे एस ए एस आई एस एंड यू डी एस टीम फॉर बींग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम आई वु लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस माई ग्रैटिट्यूड टू द आई टी विंग हू मेड द टेलीकास्ट ऑफ द इवेंट पॉसिबल आई वु लाइक टू थैंक दूरदर्शन फॉर द टेलीकास्ट ऑफ टूडेज प्रोग्राम आई थैंक ऑल सीनियर फैकल्टीज फॉर बींग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस इवेंट I thank I thank the photographers from Tung Tungsten for capturing moments of this program. Last but not the least, I would like to acknowledge the hard work of staff and students for making the event a success. Thank you and once again wish you all a very happy Independence Day. Now I request all of you to stand up for the national anthem. Refreshments are now available we request everyone to kindly proceed for refreshments <laughs> 